Hi, it's Nick from Bright Ideas Agency. This is just a short video that's a follow-up to my earlier video on how to use adaptive cards to manage a potluck lunch. And one of the features that I didn't get to cover there was how do you, with Power Automate, grab the choices that are available in a column in a SharePoint list and then use them in your flows in, uh, for example, an adaptive card in order to make sure that everything is updated. So this is just a quick example of how you would go about adding that little bit of an extension onto what I showed you in the previous video. So this demonstration is probably only going to make sense in the context of my earlier video about building a uh, potluck um, lunch manager using adaptive cards. Uh, so I'll link to that video here. Um, but we have this SharePoint list where we have a choice column called course. And then we have built an adaptive card to collect the information about uh, these these lunch items to push this back into our list using this flow that being built out with posting an adaptive card to Teams. And the way that a choice, um, if I just jump over to the designer here, the way that the choice works in an adaptive card is it's just this simple JSON array. So in this example, I had hard coded these choices into my adaptive card and just made sure that they link up with the, the right options that exist in this list. But if I were to come in and um, make an edit to this and add a choice, say, uh, dishware uh, here and save that, I would now have the option to put dishware in my list, but I would have to go in and edit my uh, adaptive card, the choice set in there, in order to push this out to Teams with this flow. So there is a way around this and I'm going to talk through how to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, use an action, the SharePoint HTTP action. And I'm going to make a request to my Uh, lunch list. It's going to be a GET request and then I'm going to uh, query the SharePoint API. So I start my query with API and then web and then I want to get the lists. I'm going to get a list by title and the title of my list if I just jump back over here is lunch menu I believe. Let's just open it in SharePoint just to check that that's correct. Yeah, the, the name of the list is lunch menu. So let's jump back over here. Lunch menu. And then I want to access the fields and I'm going to get by title on my fields. And I need to put in the column name that I'm looking for. So if we jump back over here, you can see the column name is course. So I'm going to put course in here. And then lastly, I'm going to select uh, I'm going to select equals choices. So what this should do is it's going to um, grab out of my Thanksgiving potluck lunch site the list called lunch menu and then specifically the field called course and show me the choices there. So let me just add, I'm going to add a terminate step here. Um, and we're just going to test this. So the flow failed to run, but we expected that because we put the terminate in there. What we're really interested in is this. So you can see that I have my, my field choice here and I have my main, my side, my dessert, my dishware. I'm pulling out my fields. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to grab this body output and I'm going to copy that. 
I'm going to go back into my flow, I'm going to edit my flow, and I'm going to add into here a pass JSON action. And the content for my JSON is going to be the body of my HTTP request. Then I'm going to generate from sample and paste in what I just copied. And what that's going to do is just neaten up my JSON based on uh, based on my uh, you know, my response based upon what that response was, so that I can grab out these different items that are in there. So the next thing that I need to do is construct the array um, as it looks here. So the way this is constructed is I have my choices and then for each choice I have a title and the title and a value and the value. So I want to go ahead and construct that um, in my flow. So to do that I'm going to come up here and I'm going to initialize a variable. And that's going to be a string variable, and I'm just going to call this var choices. And I don't need to have anything, um, any value to start off with in there. So then I'm going to jump down uh, underneath my pass JSON. I'm going to add a um, apply to each, and in here I'm going to drop my results. From my um, from my past JSON, and I'm going to create a compose, and my compose is going to take the format of one of these choices in my designer. So let's go ahead and put this in here, and. All I'm going to put as title is current item current item and then so what I've done there is I've constructed this text for the current item and the next thing I need to do is append that to my variable that I just created so I'm going to go to var choices and I'm going to put the output of this compose into there. And obviously when you go through this, change these names a bit so that it makes sense as to what you're doing. And then below this, just to check how that's worked, I'm just going to add in a compose. And I'm going to put my var choices in there. So let's just save this and check that this does what we want it to do. Okay, so you can see here we have our Compose2 which has put together all of our results and the one thing that we have that's a problem here is that we have this one comma at the end. Um, you can see here you don't want a comma, you only want a comma when there's another value uh, coming along afterwards. So we just need to add in a step to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is create a, an expression and we're going to use our string function. So there is a string function called slice and you can see the way this works is we put in some text, we say what the start index is and what the end index is. So because we want to just remove the last character what we're going to do is put in all of the text that we've got. We're going to start at index 0 and then we're going to end at index length minus 1. So let's go ahead and build that. So we have this slice in there and the text that we want is just the dynamic content var choices. Then we want index 0. Then we want an index which is going to be a math function so we're going to say add and then our first number is going to be length and we're going to go back and put in our var choices again and then uh, we can't see what's going on anymore so let's get on to the end here so length var choices um, 
Okay, so that's the end of the length. And then we're going to say minus one. Um, and hopefully this has all got the brackets in the right places. Yeah. So let's save that. Let's test this. Now our proposed two, we should be able to see we have no comma at the end. So we've removed that trailing comma. So now we can go ahead and go back and edit this again. We're going to remove this uh, terminate step. And we're going to step into our apply to each. And where it says post adaptive card, we're going to um, remove everything that's inside this choices. And we're going to replace that content with the output of compose2. We're going to save that. And let's go ahead and test this. So here we are in Teams with our um, form here. So let's just check our courses and you can see that Dishware is there. So now any edit you make to your SharePoint list will make a corresponding change in your form. And you can use this technique for anywhere where you would want those choices. It doesn't need to be an adaptive card. Hopefully that's a feature that's useful to you. Um, if this video has been of use, then please do give it a like um, and consider subscribing to the channel. If you need help with learning about features like this or you have projects that you're working on where you need assistance to uh, work out how to achieve what you need to achieve in Power Platform, then do consider reaching out. This is exactly the type of work that Bright Ideas Agency does. Um, and I would be happy to uh, look at your project and, and work with you to, to get to the result that you're looking for. Until next time, bye-bye.